Hi everyone, my name is Alex and today I'm glad to see you all here. People that I know and people that I don't know. Who are you? I mean really, who are you guys? What are you? Romanians, English, French, Christians, atheists, Satanists. Does that even matter? Nationality, religion, other things? Who knows? Hmm, as people say, God only knows. But who is this God that knows everything? Probably some of you will think, I know who God is. What kind of a stupid question is that? God is just dog backwards. <laughs> okay, you're probably not thinking that at all. But just to be clear, these are some of my ideas and some other people's ideas. And if this presentation offends you somehow, you may leave anytime. Or you can sit and listen to some wrongly formed opinions. Okay then, you may proceed. When I say the word God, I bet you have a pretty good idea of what exactly I'm referring to as a God, a supreme being, our creator, the Alpha and Omega. You are conscious of that idea, but it may solicit a subjective way of thinking, because a God, as you name it, can be different for each of us, depending on education, culture or life experience. God is not like this Rubik's Cube that we can all see and agree on its form, use and meaning. Unlike an object, we cannot agree on the existence of God by senses. We can, however, share ideas and opinions on God and agree more or less with each other. So then God is more in an abstract domain, existing in thought or as an idea, but not having a convincing specific physical form, which leads us to think, is God just in our mind? The human brain is the most complex structure known by us. It makes it very hard to explore and we don't have too much time, unfortunately. Time is short. God, what did we do to deserve this? In this case, God is used as an exclamation, used for emphasis to express emotions such as surprise, anger or distress. But in other definitions, God is referred as being the creator and ruler of the universe and the source of all moral authority. We all know the part of the creator and ruler, but what about morality? Didn't psychologists sorted out that morality is in our mind? Does that second part of the definition literally agrees that God depends on us? Morality, or the principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong, or good and bad behavior. In Freudian theory, it is called the superego, which is one of the three aspects of the human psyche or personality, along with the ID, or the primary instincts, and the ego the rational way in which we satisfy instincts. This superego consists of two systems, the conscience and the ideal self. So if God is in our mind, does it make sense that God is at the level of the superego or that God is the superego? The conscience, source of all moral values and the ideal self, a superior model of us which pushes our life decisions into creating ourselves. Nikola Tesla said, The gift of mental power comes from God, and if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with this great power. Behavior which falls short of the ideal self may be punished by the superego through guilt. The superego can also reward us through the ideal self when we behave properly by making us feel proud. So there we have the belief in God that gives us power and the punishment when we do wrong. But how we decide what is good or bad behavior? Of course, each of us may have some different moral principles. For example, some believe it is wrong to kill animals in any case, and others believe there's no problem in killing animals as long as it is for food or if they put life in danger. And the world can go on with both opinions. Individuals can choose what to believe concerning this matter but there are moral rules that govern us by a huge majority. Like Eddie Griffin said, you don't need to read the Bible to know it's wrong to kill your mother. You are born knowing it. It is written in your essence. Does that essence of morality come from God? What makes us not do wrong things? A part of punishment which comes from exterior factors. A punishment that comes from within ourselves, which subconsciously turns us guilty and unworthy or a supreme being who sees anything and punishes your bad behavior. Isn't it the same thing, kind of, 
Which explanation is better? Some people on other level might say God and religion was invented purposely to control the masses. And they may have some truth here. Religion unite and divide us. And many use it in their own interests. But that opinion does not answer my question on what defines the idea of God. People created gods for different purposes through history, as spirits that rule nature and human activity, to whom we pray for better results. Of course, God is probably just God unquestionably, but maybe, couldn't be that God is just a theory, like a metaphor or allegory for something nowadays in the 21st century can be explained through modern science, like a type of energy or a process in the universe, or a being somewhere else in the universe superior to us humans because we now know that we're nothing but a very small part of the vast universe we live in. We most certainly are not alone in the universe, and there might be beings superior to us out there. And religion, in a way, laid the ideas of superior beings and creation way before science. We had these ideas before science started struggling to find answers too. Religion is strictly linked with humankind, at least since the modern human existed about 160,000 years ago, and even before. Religion dates a long time ago, we can't possibly know exactly when. We presume that even Neanderthals had a form of religion, because it was discovered that they had tombstones on their graves which may represent a habit or tradition caused by a religion. But it is around 38,000 BCE that we have a solid clue, the Lovamensch the oldest known zoomorphic sculpture in the world that represents a half-human, half-lion figure. It is also the oldest known piece of figurative art. And it is believed that every form of art was originally linked with religion and deities, except the most recent one, cinematography. We don't care about that. So maybe art is a significant clue about God. We create art, but art also creates us. We seek new and different meanings in art. The basic idea about art is that it's meant to represent reality. But as Picasso said, art is not truth. It represents lies that tell the truth. A chair with three legs is useless. You can't sit on a broken chair. But the broken chair is a piece of art by Daniel Bersand in Geneva, Switzerland. It's an ordinary object with no practical use. We are all used to the idea that you use a chair to sit on. And if you take that utility away, what is left is a useless piece of art. But art isn't that useless, isn't it? Because it forces us to give new meanings to things that you thought before they had only one use. Art deprograms us, so we see things from new perspectives, and so we reach new ideas and questions that we didn't think before. Like God. In a great video from YouTube channel Vsauce, in which Michael Stevens and James May are talking about nostalgia and how music is linked with it, also explains the theory on how our communication skills were naturally selected into us, causing music, listening or dancing as a form of sharing common thoughts with each other. Thoughts we share like the idea of deities, which is also rooted in our evolution. So then, did God create life or did life create God? It is said that God created and has power over nature and human fortune. What is this fortune that created nature and humans? Biogenesis, the hypothesis that living matter arises only from other living matter. In other Darwinian words, humans arise from primates, mammals had a common ancestors, and so on. Every living organism is formed from other living organisms. There are strong evidences to sustain this theory. But how did life make appearance on Earth? There are two possible sources of organic molecules on the early Earth. Extraterrestrial origins, which means organic molecules form in interstellar dust clouds and then rain down on the planet. Or terrestrial origins, abiogenesis, the original evolution of life or living organisms from inorganic or inanimated substances. There were experiments in laboratory that proved that in water, inorganic substance, under the sun influence, organic molecules may form. That means life on Earth originated in water, and the one that made this possible is the light of our star, the sun. Earth is orbiting the sun at the right distance from it to maintain life. 
There are theories based on research of all depictions that Christians actually worship the sun as a god. Many symbols of their faith and religion might be associated with the start of our solar system. Also, the symbol before the cross was the fish which may refer to the life that originated in water. There would be no life on earth without the sun, the right distance from it, water and many other factors. Life is a very fragile form of existence compared to the scale of the universe, in which any small change might cause the end of it. So who is it that keeps us alive? What is it? It is pure chance and probabilities, or something that purposely controls all this, like a god. Does any kind of a god exist? You most certainly cannot tell for sure, and also we cannot confirm that there is no god. Science says that if a theory cannot be disproven in repeated ways, then it might actually be true. But in philosophy we have Occam's razor, which states that in explaining a thing, no more assumptions should be made than are necessary. The principle is often invoked to defend reductionism or nominalism. So what does this say? Should we get rid of God and keep our theories on universe and nature? Or should we keep God in this equation? Is God necessary? Is God real? Who is God? Well, those questions may have an answer different for each individual. But if an answer fits you best, who decides it's a wrong answer? Faith is, at one and the same time, absolutely necessary and altogether impossible. And thank you for your attention.